Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And uh, it's probably a relatively quiet morning, although um, indices, I mean, here's NASDAQ still slipping a little bit, which has been uh, the uh, MO for the last couple of days. Um, take a look at the S&Ps. Oh, still holding up near these highs. It made a new all-time high yesterday as did uh, the Dow, which I don't follow the Dow. Um, crude oil, I shared that 69.39, and it kind of pulled back, but it's been hanging around that 69.39. Then it finally dipped down to 69, but it's right back up to the 69.39. Pretty key area here. Uh, if you look, you see right there, come across here. So it hasn't pulled back very much from that area. And uh, we'll take a look at Bitcoin. Man, this thing is still holding up like a champ. It has started to pull back, but remember that we've got that key area. Let's pull like this. There we go, right there. You see that 46,412? And it's been bumping up its head against that. It's been a little bit of a fade. Not bad, I guess, if you're just day trading it. Well, I mean, it hasn't given much. But it did make it up uh, out up to like 680, 46,772. We've got that 46,412. So it's it's been having a little bit of trouble in that area. Um, and we'll see if anything's happened. We did go on in, you know, with the Euro, we were expecting this to, remember we talked about this 1713 area here, and I did not expect to see much of a push from the CPI and not any kind of special insight. I was just, we were, but we were looking, remember at where this market was already. You see how much we'd already come down here. And we just didn't see like there was a whole lot, even if we took a look at it on a weekly, there wasn't much beyond that that we could lean on to say, what if it goes to this? So I really didn't expect that. Remember, I think I, we had our, our our buy chart support coming into this was 7.13, 17.13. And then yesterday we just moved it down to, I think, 17.05. And the low was, I think, 1706, if I remember correctly. And we've moved higher, and I said that we probably vacillate between these two areas. Because remember, we've been trying to push down here. We remember the first time a couple of few weeks back, we missed it by just three pips or missed hitting that level. Um, nothing extra that I hit. It's just I was going with the level. So at the beginning of the week, remember on Monday, I said, you know what, I'm just going to lay out the levels for the week. I don't think it's going to get there today, which was Monday. I go, but this is where I think we'll go to 1713. And so um, I think it was on Tuesday, it got to 1714. I kind of bounced, but I think eventually made it down to like 1712 or 10. And then that's why I thought, okay, I just don't see it going much past this. But if we, if, um, but I think we'll bounce back, but I think we'll be stuck in this area here. Um, between 17, 13, and 48. Now, I did the announcement that, well, that's a little bit too close. So I think I gave it up to 75, but that's where we stand now. So um, take a look at the news. Um, bear with me. Um, uh, we did have UK GDP come out a couple hours ago, came in at 4.8. That's for the quarter. And then uh, industrial production came out at that same time also, up seven tenths. And monthly GDP, hmm, this seems odd, monthly GDP, but anyway. Um, and then we did have, at the top of the sixth hour, we do have industrial production out of the Eurozone. And then uh, 
we do have um, jobless claims, uh, weekly jobless claims. And then, of course, yesterday at CPI, so this uh, t- today at uh, 8.30 Eastern, we'll have 7.30 is my time, though, uh, but it's 8.30 Eastern. We'll have a PPI along with the jobless claims, and looks like that's going to be it. Oh, there's a 30-year bond auction. Oh, that would be interesting. 30-year bond auction. A lot of things going to have that much of an effect. It might push things a little bit. So with that, let's go and get started with the um, the analysis. Okay. So the euro held the 117 level on the release of CPI. The pair is expected to vacillate between 1713 to 1775. I thought that might be a little bit too close, but 48. Um, to 1775 for the next two days. So it'll be due today to tomorrow. Uh, resistance will be 1778 with support of 1713. Oh, we did move this down to 03. So we did move it a little bit down. I think the low was only five or six, something like that. So 1713, which is our level from before, to 1778. And let's go move into the cable. So the cable posted a positive small legged doji right here, um, post CPI, opening for a counter rally, or it's opening up for a counter rally to 39.45, which will be resistance over the next couple of days. It's the same thing, like remember with the euro at 37.13, I started out on Monday, I said, look, I think that's what we're going to, I mean, 17.13, it's not going to hit it today. But I think this will get to, and we've got to that, but we got to it on Tuesday. Well, it's the same thing here. I think we're going to push up to, there's a potential to 39.45. No, I don't think it's going to happen today. Anything can happen. But I think by tomorrow we could be there. So it's opening up a counter rally up to 39.45, um, which will be resistance over the next couple of days. Support will be 38.13. Remember, 38.13 was our support coming into, uh, what you call, into Tuesday. Or at the beginning of the week, we had 38.13. We eventually did make it down there. Um, So it's going to be 39.45. And I came up with that. I am looking at the two-hour chart, I think it was. Yeah, that's where I came with the 39.45. There it is. It's on the two hour chart, but I'm, I've got some bodies here. But look, you see here where this support is on these bodies? That comes in right there at 39.45. I guess it's 46, but you can see there's it comes across it real nicely. So that's what I'm looking for. Counter rally up to 39.45. We'll see if we get there by tomorrow. <sighs> Support's going to be that 38.13. I don't think we'll make it all the way down there. Support really should be 38.40 is a little bit too close. Right there, looking at the two hour. So let's go with 38.31. That's a little bit too low to go to 13. Okay. 
Let's go move into the Aussie dollar. This thing is just stuck in the mud. Um, this doggone, uh, which we'll call Nasdaq, keeps going lower. I want to get a little bit of a good rally so it can get back into the shorts. Oh my goodness, hang on. Aussie posted a small rally on Wednesday, opening a move back to 7402, which are basically just going with this body right there. You see that coming across? Uh, which will be resistance. Support will be 7325. So there we go. To its credit, it held above here. I thought it was going to eventually come down. I thought there was a risk down to 7250 on the CPI. Obviously, the CPI didn't come in to the way some people expected it. So, uh, but uh, to its credit, it didn't even go below 73. And we're looking for 7402. Obviously, these are still bearish. Uh, let's go to the dollar yen now. So the dollar yen closed sub 1050 after pushing above 1075. Resistance will be 1065 with support at 1013. So 1065. We did have this push. Remember, we started out the week. We had our, our bias chart resistance. I don't remember. I think it was 1065. I think it was 1065 with the next area being 1097. So obviously, since we closed up pretty solid here, and with the CPI, we really said, well, what if it goes to whatever level? I'm not whatever level, but the next one, which should have been 1097. Obviously, it didn't. CPI didn't come in as, as once again as expected. We pitched up to, I think, to 1080. So it wasn't too, too far off, but it didn't make it up to that level. So now we're looking at 1065 on resistance. I don't think we're necessarily going to get there, but that would be resistance. And support. If we continue to slide back, it was going to be 10, 13. This doggone NASDAQ is still, man, I want to get back in. Holy smokes, I'm going to try to sell at the bottom. Don't. Okay, uh, let's go into the cash dollar index. So the dollar index found offers just below 93.26, which is our bias chart resistance. We've been talking about that since the end of the week. We said, hey, it's 93.26. If we were to get beyond that, it'd be 53. But for the most part, we said, I don't, we kept it 93.26, even though CPI, whatever. I think it made, all, it made up to 93.19, pulled back. So we're going to keep that as resistance. It isn't that far away. And then support, we're going to put it 92.56. Obviously, real tight ranges. Now, let's go and move into Bitcoin. Well, we're still holding up in here. We're holding really well. And this 46,412 is overall overall holding up against the resistance. You can see right here. So I'm going to stick with this 46,412. Might as well stay with it. 
And we had 44,570. Well, not bad. I mean, the low so far has been 44,856. We had 570. So no changes here in Bitcoin. We'll stick with that. So let's move into the spoof. Now we had 44.35. We closed at another all-time high. Holy smokes. Remember the beginning of the week we had ice market ran out of gas. We said 44.50. And if we get beyond 44.50, it was 44.82. Well, 44.50 is still looming. Um, let's go just, I don't think it'll make it quite there. Let's just go 44.48, thinking that it gets there, but it kind of runs out of gas. Um, I'm still hearing the volume is really low across the board. I mean, I don't know how these guys are going to be able to push beyond that, but they are holding up a bit above it. Um, internals are terrible, though. Um, on the downside, it's still got to be the same thing, 4412. Even though there's a lot of stuff up here, this is where – They'll find support and they'll try and bounce off it. And if it breaks beyond that, it'd be 43.98. But we're, we're some ways away from that. So we'll just move this back to 44.12 singularly by itself. Let's go and move into the NASDAQ. I had a good morning on this thing. And I just couldn't get a feel where this thing really wanted to go. Although I had 40, 14, 939. Remember, we posted that. We're looking for a move there. And it came up here, was able to sell into this area here. And then I wasn't sure what it was going to do. And then we kept on breaking down. And I didn't want to chase it, which I still don't want to chase it. I'm kind of hoping that we pop back up in here. I just don't know. Uh, now, we are already on Thursday. So there's a potential for this to break down and do get down to the 14. Um, 939. The move back up to this 15,057, which had been support on the way down, then it was resistance, then, then it was a pivot, and then when it came back here, it came back up here, and then it faded. Um, This kind of makes me think the way this is acting right now, 15,011, which is how it acted over here when it came back up here intraday. Let's see if we can see that on a 30 minute. It came back here and then it just rolled down. And then I missed all this. And for the rest of the day, I didn't do anything. It was just frustrating um, after doing good in the morning. And um I guess I thought maybe we could have pushed back up in here. I wasn't sure. I guess maybe I thought we'd push back up towards 80, I guess. And then, but we just came right back to that and it became a pivot. And then we just rolled downhill and then we rolled some more. And then we just kind of sat in here. So maybe we'll push in here. The resistance right now is going to be 42. If we would have come back up to 42, this would be the pivot, but they might be able to rally. But there's just a lot of uh, movement here. Not a lot of movement, but a lot of volume in this area. So I don't know if it has, if it is towards the end of the week. Let's take a look at the daily. And actually, I didn't even notice this. I, I keep forgetting to look at the daily chart. You can see here it came right back down to the 20 day moving average, which I do have that. On a daily, I mean, I mean, of course, it's a daily, but I mean, uh, a simple moving average. And we came here. So I guess what we can do is maybe we'll push back to these lows and we'll see if we get some traction. And then that a close below that would open this to go even lower to accelerate tomorrow. So I guess I might just have no choice but to get short, even though I don't like this area here to come in. I'd rather see it rally. I just feel like we're in no man's land. Um, Although I think the move up in here, we're really having a tough time. I talked about this. We shared this. And we talked about how this market 
had rallied here. Then we came back in here and we, we spent this next few days consolidating. Then we tried to break above it and we just couldn't get any more push. And this is what I was talking about. When I was saying, hey, I think this market is on its last legs, um, momentum wise. It's like a car. It's starting to run out of gas. Give it the last push on the accelerator. It's on the fumes. And then uh, I even said, I think we'll get up on a grade, like on a grade, and then you start to start to slide back, which is exactly what happened the very next day. But then, as I said, uh, we kind of hung around, which I guess that's right here, what I was talking about here. And then the next day, we sure enough, we came back down. And then it wasn't, you know, we were still holding above here. So I guess you can see here, this is key for it to hold. So yesterday, we pushed back up here. But we did close below this area, which is, once again, I told you that pivot now. And now it's a matter of what, what do we do now? Unless we turn around and just rally to the end of the week. I guess intraday, I'll need to look at some of the bigger charts. Like, um, I guess we could do that right now. Let's see where things stand. So I look at the, whatchamacallit, the, um, what do you call it, Fang Map. Let's see where we stand here. Let's take a look at Apple. Yeah. This is kind of like flagging. You look at it. See right here. And there. I guess we could draw the thing real quick. See that? So I guess it opens the door for us to break lower. Then I guess we can see some really big follow through. Um, let's take a look now at Microsoft. Wow. This thing is still blowing and going. Holy smokes. It's been a while since I, I used to pay attention to all these. But it got to be just crazy. You know what I mean, because you couldn't see the forest for the trees. But we are in an area right now. We have to start kind of keep keeping an eye on it. Like, where are we? Like, what is it? Are we open to breaking much? You know, breaking lower and generating some momentum. Uh, the next one is going to be Google. Wow. Man, holy smokes. You would think this was like a 15-minute chart for the market got bananas and look at it's daily. The next one is going to be Amazon. Now, this one did post a monthly low. I did see that with Jedi Marcus mentioned we pushed a monthly low. Oh, boy, that's a pretty big dip here. Uh, We're still in the queue. I mean, look at all this volume here. There's Amazon. Then let's look at Facebook. This is still holding up pretty well. Hmm. Netflix. Hmm. It's not like it's in trouble. It's just middle of the road in it. Uh, NVIDIA, which is not really that important anymore, but Intel. Um, this thing has been in the dumps for literally for months. I remember when it broke into the 40s and did forever and a day to try and get back up there. Oh, wow, they did do pretty good. Eventually make it back up to 68. And we've kind of slid back down, but we're kind of like in a, in a demand area, so it's not like as if it's in trouble. Um, because it's been that way for a while. Then we'll take a look at Tesla. That's still holding up relatively well. And 
and a couple of more. We'll take a look at Peloton. Uh, okay. PayPal. Does look a little bit worrisome. Does look kind of looks like uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Amazon. And lastly, eBay. Um, they don't look like they're in trouble. Apple is a bit concerning here. So I guess keep an eye on Apple. Microsoft, I still hold it really well. Google, very well. Amazon, you see, remember, that's like the same thing as eBay. Facebook. Facebook, uh, it's a little bit concerning, but it's going to have to drop and get past 351. So that's about it there. Maybe we can see some follow through. If Apple, I guess we have to keep Apple on our right there at the forefront, keep an eye on Apple in case uh, that starts to break. That would accelerate this lower. Now, technically, it looks like we could make a move lower. Um, we could see some acceleration uh, through tomorrow. Um, so support now, still is going to be 14,939. Now, that area, we looked on the profile, I posted a bunch of charts a couple of days back, and um, but there's Room for overshoots. Actually, the other day, I think it was it wasn't yesterday. I actually picked some up as we were falling. And that was a little bit, I say dangerous, but in a way it was. And um, I was, you know, it rallied back. Not a whole whole lot, but I was able to play it the other way after playing short. I had a real good day two days ago. Uh, but my, well, the reason I'm saying that is when we drop down here, I would not be trying to pick this thing up. I hope I don't do anything stupid like that and try and do that. Uh, because I think even if we do get down here to 14,939, and I'm not going to go on the profile, we already showed those in extensively. Um, but I think we'll get some pretty nasty overshoots. You don't want to be trying catching this falling knife because it'll get a little scary down there. Um, so now let's go to gold. Oh, wow, we finally made it above 1754. So here's that set. Remember, we were live when we did that. When he got up to that area, we just kid said, I, I should have just taken the short of the time, but we we're it's at, at the room, by that time it was already at 1752. And even then at 51, but we sat there for the longest time, even throughout the day. I think we eventually got down to like 46 or something. Eventually it did go lower, and then we did come down to 1722 or beyond, which was our support. And we're back above here. The resistance right now is gonna be right there. Let's go with 1765. Let's call it 17. It's actually 1766. Just keep it simple. Uh, because remember on Sunday, we fill all the parts. There's not really enough to see on the profile there, but I would get 1766. And then on the downside, um, Right there, you see this little, little, um, little doji thing right here? That would be at 17, that, and that's where we went to. So there's a 1746. We'll keep it pretty tight. And then lastly, with crude, mm. This thing's really held up. Well, now we're kind of, we're still running out of gas against the 69.46, but I thought we were going to really run out of gas. And uh, uh, 69.39, I meant to say. But we're still holding up relatively well. And the market was really oversold. I never did get back in this thing after, remember, we, we caught the bottom here. At the beginning of the week, we said 65.24, and the low was 65. Uh, 15. I ended up buying it down there and I, I scalped out and never got back in it, which was a huge mistake. Um, it certainly looks like it was to pop some stops. So we're going, well, we did do that already. We'll go to the uh, to the profile.
And let's go with the full session. Oh, wow, it is full session, so it's not even showing it. Let's go back here. Sometimes it will do that. And I just got to put it back to 30 minutes. Come on. the hell we've already gone over this about the significance of the 6939 if we were to push above it see here's even the 6933 against that you've got this high right there um Unless it just runs up to 70. There's 70, 37, and then there's a volume level right there. You see the pink line? 70, 52. So my concern is we're hanging around here quite a bit. The top of that is 7021 right here. And the POC on this day. And look, and you see here's the initial balance, but that's full session. It's not even regular trading hours. Let's go to RTH. Okay. the hell oh because they had this is two hours no wonder talk on it What the hell? There we go. Yeah, it just keeps coming back up to this area, seventy eighteen in the top of this balance here in this RTH is 7030. I mean, it's holding here against the 6930, 6939. And let's just go with, let's call that 7029. So we'll go with, which we shared that in the chat, which was 69.39. And that was even key to get above 69.01. And if it were to break above that, it'd be 70, let's go with 70.22. If it were to break above that, then you'll get a whole bunch of um, stops being triggered. And the initial balance area is 70.30. And the high volume mark here is 70.50 with the POC being at 70.64. We'd, we'd goose a whole bunch of stops. So if we do get above it, let's go with the volume mark, which is 70.49. Well, that's going to be the concern. If we get above that, we're going to goose a lot of stops. So there's the... Um, See right now we're 69.16. Uh, there's the bias chart. 
and I'll get that posted in the room. And uh, thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover webinar.